Welcome back to Tarot by the Bay. I'm David. Um, this is going to be a reading on Kamal Harris and a potential VP pick of hers. And that's going to be um, Minnesota Governor uh, Tim Walls. Now, if you check out, if you're uh, subscribed to uh, Twin Tarot with Gary and David, you'll have seen that on Monday morning, we had a video go up called, um, you know, Kamala Harris's VP picks, kind of like the, the dream team or something like that. And we went over VP picks that would excite the Democrats, you know, like Gavin Newsom or Pete Buttigieg, you know, picks like that. And then... Uh, the video that has gone up Tuesday morning, at the same time this video is going up, we looked at the more conservative choices. And I got my list here so I can remember the names, like Mark Kelly, Andy Bashir, or Josh Shapiro. And uh, one of the comments that uh, we got taken to task on was that on the, the first one where we had the, uh, the ideological picks, that we weren't be taking this thing very seriously. And we should look at, you know, um, other more serious candidates. Well... It was a multi-part video, and we said it was a multi-part video. But one of the candidates we did not talk about, well, actually, there were two. One was the uh, <clears throat> Pennsylvania governor uh, who just, Roy Cooper, who just dropped out. Uh, I think it was Roy Cooper's from Pennsylvania. Is that correct? Let me see. I've got it right up here. Um, North Carolina, excuse me, Governor Roy Cooper withdrew. And the reason why he withdrew is that his lieutenant governor is a conservative and um uh, I don't know if he's MAGA, but he, he if he's not, he should be. And so he doesn't want to, you know, be out of out of the state uh, campaigning and then have his lieutenant governor in there causing problems because the lieutenant governor's already run his mouth about problems that he would cause. So he's dropping out. Roy Cooper is also 67 years old. And if the whole idea is to get a younger ticket, 67 is not getting that much younger. Um so now we're going to take one of, and again, so one of the people we did look at was, uh, did not look at was Tim Walls. Uh, for him, um, <clears throat> Tim Walls is not a career politician. He uh, uh, had, I don't know what his career was before this, this, it, it's probably in this article I have here, but it just said I lived, I lived a whole life before I started politics, but it didn't say what his whole life was. And I didn't go to Wikipedia. Maybe I'll go there real quick. Yeah, funny what a little bit of research does. Uh, he was in the Army National Guard for 24 years, and he was a teacher at uh, Pine Ridge Indian Reservation in South Dakota. Um, uh, and he took teaching positions also. He, he taught in China. Um, but basically, he was a teacher. And uh, he also coached a football team. You know, So he's, he's been around. He, he's done some stuff. And now he's a politician. He uh, this article basically says, you no, know, he's kind of gruff, um, but he's got that sort of midwestern rural no nonsense about him that, uh, and uh, seems to be good at forming coalitions and working coalitions, which is uh, maybe a knock on Harris that she's not as good as a team player or team building, and might could just, could use somebody like this. Uh, to help her along. He's 60 years old, so he's not very old at all uh, as far as, as as things go with this. Uh, with Kamala Harris being you know, 58, 59 years old, there there's not much of an age difference here. Okay, um, so I want to look at the energy around Tim Walls as a potential VP pick, and uh, probably let's look at just the energy around uh, Kamala Harris's uh, VP pick. So again, Roy Cooper dropped out, but there are a number of people. You have Mark Kelly that's still in the running. Pete Buttigieg is still in the running. Andy Bashir. Um, uh, now, now I've lost the name of the other guy I mentioned earlier. It should be right here, though, uh, or not. No, I closed it. Oh, well. And uh, Tim Walls. So let's see. How are things looking for the VP pick? What is Kamala Harris kind of looking for in a VP? Uh, deck is upside down. Page of Pentacles. Um, might want somebody younger with a message. So Mr. Cooper might be might be okay to drop out. But it could also be somebody who has the ability to resonate with young people 
and, in, and get young people to come out and vote. And again, here we have a high school teacher. We have somebody who uh, coached a football team. Uh, he was a faculty advisor to the first Gay Straight Alliance at the high school. Um, they ran education travel adventures for summer educational trips for high school juniors and seniors going to China. So, you know, this guy, he's spent his life working with young people. He gets, he's going to understand young people. So that actually plays to, uh, um, plays to his strengths here. Crossed with temperance. Um, the person that she needs has to be able to resonate with young people. Um, has to be able to get along with her. They uh, and has to be able and you know, talking about building coalitions. Probably has to work with coalition building, team building on this one. <clears throat> Somebody with patience. Uh, and right now she's looking. She is looking and searching for people. Now you could look at Pete Buttigieg. You know, there's a young person. He seems to resonate with young people. He's a gay man, so, you know, maybe some of America would not be a, uh, it might be a bridge too far for them, which is a problem for them, honestly. Um, um, but, you know, you've got, uh, but you have other candidates that are in their 40s that are running for this job. So, you know, the Democrats have some pretty good choices to make here as she, as she is searching for her VP candidate. In the past, the Queen of Pentacles, she herself <laughs> was a VP. So she understands now what is being asked of the VP candidate. And it's very possible that Biden leaned on her more heavily than he would a normal VP candidate if he was gearing her up to take the helm and, and lead the country. But she knows she has values and she knows what her values are. I think she also understands her blind spots. And, you know, in my videos with my brother, we talk about VP candidates in one of the traditional um, uh, cho uh, cho uh, choices or uh, criteria is you want somebody who addresses your blind spots. And what you have with Tim Walls is somebody who um, who could uh, appeal to middle America, rural America, and uh, and as well as young people. Current situation is the King of Cups. <sighs> this person's going to have to have some passion. They're going to have to be. Uh, they're going to have to be like an ambassador. Whereas you know, you think of Kamala Harris as being like a Queen of Swords energy. Uh, this guy's going to do a, a role like Biden does, where you know, more of a. a a kinder, you know, he's the good cop. <laughs> Maybe that's the way to put it. Kamala could be, it allows Kamala to be the bad cop. And if, again, if you've seen Kamala when she was a, a senator for California on the, I think it was the Intelligence Committee, uh, you know, grilling William Barr and uh, during Senate confirmation hearing, grilling uh, Brett Kavanaugh. Oh, <laughs> you're looking for the good cop somewhere because you got stuck in a room with a bad cop asking you questions under oath. <laughs> Not where you want to be with her. <laughs> Overarching energy is the Knight of Cups. Yeah, somebody, somebody who's the peacemaker. Somebody she can work with. Somebody's peacemaker. Look at all these cup cards. All these, uh, all these cups here. That we've got with the temperance the king and the knight of cups here and then we've got you know again youth and and values so their values have to align current situation there are she is spoiled for choices in this and um the other thing is you know again i, I refer to the card as the hillbilly brawl card um this you know could be you know the rural folk that what candidate can you bring in here that's going to calm, that's going to smooth their feathers, their ruffled feathers that some, you know, San Francisco West Coast liberal is going to come in here? You know, it's just funny. If they had known Kamala's uh, uh, growing up, you know, she rode a school bus. She was bused to school from, you know, middle class type upbringing. Um, 
this is not somebody who came from a ton of money and is you know part of the elite class or anything along those lines. She is you know very much uh, a common person, a normal person who happens to be very very sharp and um, has made a lot out of her career. Um, the outcome is the Five of Cups. There's going to be a lot of good candidates that are going to be vying for this position. And some people, they're not going to get the nod. And it's not because they're not worthy. There's just, you know, there's certain criteria that you're going to need to meet. And some people aren't going to meet that criteria. Okay. We can have opinions. But at the end of the day, Kamala Harris is going to be the one who's deciding. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be political operatives that will be there guiding her, giving her opinions and stuff like that. But Kamala Harris does not strike me as the type of person who um, needs somebody else to make her decisions for her. <laughs> Remember that Mike Pence debate? Excuse me, I'm talking right now. And she's got that smile on her face like, this is your opportunity to shut up. And then she gives that look at, I'm, I, excuse me, I, I'm, talking, I'm talking right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what you need to do? <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's why the, deba the debate she'll have with Trump will be interesting. I'll be very curious. I mean, that's going to be pay-per-view stuff right there, seriously. Uh, Trump is now saying, oh, maybe I'll debate her, maybe I won't. Yeah, he's to... free airtime for him to ramble in front of his uh, his base. He'll take it. You know, like, now, I didn't think he would debate Biden, but he debated Biden. Uh, he'll, he'll want to debate Kamala Harris. He'll just hope that Ronnie Harris, Ronnie Harris, Ronnie Jackson has him dialed in like he did for the Biden debate. But we will have a totally different person debating him. So that might be interesting to see. Um, so Tim Walls. How is Tim Walls... Uh, what is Tim Walls, uh, his fit into the Kamala Harris scheme of things? What's going to be his strengths? King of Swords. Um, I think he's going to have a strong enough personality to deal with her Queen of Swords-like personality. She's the prosecutor, but, you know, he's got a military background. He's he's not, you know, uh, he's not a pushover, basically is what I'm saying. Page of Wands, he can carry her message forward. King of Wands, he can make decisions too. You know, he's, he's a governor, for God's sake. You know, and, uh, you know, he's a... Uh, He's, he's done programs, progressive programs in his state to uh, make sure kids are fed and women have health care decisions on there. So he's got a lot of action. There's a lot of action. I think he can, be, he can work fairly independently. And he's agreeable. He gets on with people. And it could be a very good choice on her part. High Priestess, feminine, divine feminine wisdom and knowledge, asking the right questions. I, he could be a really good fit for her. When uh, Gary and I have thrown cards, uh, we, you know, again, you'll watch the video. <laughs> you'll see. We, we did it as like a, kind of like a deathmatch type thing. Uh, looking at uh, the various candidates and who had the best cards and put them up head to head with each other. We did not have Tim Walls in there. I mean, he and I might need to do another video with Tim Walls as a wild card uh, pick compared to... Uh, the, uh, the candidate that we've come through. Gary and I recorded it on Saturday and Sunday, so I already know the outcome of it, but you know, we're releasing it on a daily basis, so you get to see it unfold. <laughs> Explains why the shirts look the same. Although Gary did do a wardrobe change halfway through the videos. But I didn't, because I'm lazy. All right. Um, What are the weaknesses that Tim Wall sees with uh, with him and Kamala Harris? What would be the weaknesses? Fundraising, money. 
I don't think it's a values thing. I think it's a fundraising thing. He may not be the best fundraiser. Star card. He doesn't have the star power. You can imagine if Pete Buttigieg was picked or Gavin Newsom was picked. You know, these um, these up-and-comers that, you know, the, the Democrats get all excited for. A total star power in with something along those lines. But that may not be... Um, that may not be his strong point. He might be very understated with that. <clears throat> Four of coins. Um, guarded. He might be protective of his values. Or again, this just could be that he's not good at fundraising or getting that um, the big donors. The big donors may not be as excited about him. They want something a little more splashy. And there's a lot of competition. You know, it, it's kind of like just, be, you know, he interviews well, but he has shortcomings. You know, you don't have to marry this prince. There's lots of other princes that are vying for your hand in marriage, as it were. And, you know, underneath it all, you got to make a tough choice. And a part of that tough choice might be, does Tim Walls is his best, you know, Is he might be a rising star, but... Is he the best choice for vice president or is he better served as um, the governor of Minnesota or as this article is talking about, maybe a cabinet post? Is he better off in a cabinet post position? You know, again, a lot of competition and, you know, there's and, and money is, is going to play a part of it. Again, whether it's uh, fundraising or what um, the the uh, big mega donors want or are urging that's going to play a role in it sorry that's just there's so much money in politics right now uh in the way it's set up money has a lot of influence on both parties so got to get the money out of the politics so that the politicians can choose folks who are the best choices for that position as opposed to you know where you take money out of the component of it Take the money component out of it. You know, Kevin McCarthy was Speaker of the House pretty much solely because he was an incredible fundraiser and could get tens of millions of dollars from donors to help other Republicans uh, on other tickets. And his reward was the House Speakership. He was terrible at it. You know, he just wanted the title and he was terrible at it. Um, he goes down in history as a House Speaker, but, you know, <laughs> pretty feckless one at that. Peter Principle. He got promoted to maximum in, uh, inefficiencies. So, yeah, but you know, again, he got to that position by by money, and that that's why money should be out of it. He, if there was never a money component involved with it, he never would have been chosen as Speaker of the House. Okay, so um, final energy um, on Tim Walls as a potential VP pick from Kamala Harris here. A little four quarter, a little four quarter to. Um, foreshadow what the future might hold for him oh wouldn't you like to come down and see it three of wands waiting for your ship to come in you know he might be he there might be a final cut and he's going he's going to make it to the final cuts whether he's chosen or not is another thing he may not be but i think he's going to if like you know she, if she interviews like six or seven people and wants to narrow it down to two he might be like one of the final two or three yeah, final two. You know, juggling, trying to decide which which person am I picking. Got a strong, um, there's a strong sense of, uh, you know, a, a quest, a new new goals in life and that type of thing here. <sighs> Ten of Swords, bringing things to an end. Knight of Pentacles, mercenary. Um, I'm, if I were to look at this, you know, I think he gets close. I don't think he quite gets over the finish line with this card. Um, but that doesn't mean that there isn't a position for him in her cabinet. It's just deciding what's the best value for this man and his, um, and his strengths. But he's, he has a lot to offer and his he's got uh, good morals, good ethics, 
and might be on a quest of some sort. So it would not surprise me if he does not get the VP pick, and it would not surprise me if he gets offered some upper position in the federal government that he takes. Okay? But that's the energy now. We, we've got another month or so before Kamala is picking her, uh, maybe less than a month. We got a few weeks before she's picking her VP pick. So as we get closer to that, we'll uh, get to see who, which candidates drop out and we can revisit it and see what's coming up um, with her final choices. Thank you very much for watching this video and supporting my channel. I hope you found this reading insightful and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care.